All right, and now we just need to put this layer behind the other one so we get a nice page edge there. And that's pretty good. Let's add a pattern to this. I'm going to use this grid pattern here that I have. And put it down at about 6%. Maybe 7. So it's nice and subtle. That's right in there. That's what that looks like. Now, to give it more of a book feel to it, we need to design out the spine a little bit. So I'm going to just make a quick selection, create a new layer, switch to black, and so now I have, and then my gradient tool, so now I have a black to transparent gradient. And I'm just going to click and drag out from here. And that's a little bit too strong, so we're going to go back to there. Then I'm going to hold down the Option key and click between these two layers, and that will clip my new gradient layer uh, to my book cover layer. And so as you can see, that's cleans um, up that extra space. And now using the number keys on my keypad, I'm going to press 2 to drop it down to 20% opacity. So command clicking will make a selection of that layer. And then I'm going to change this to white. And fill my new layer with white. Once again, holding down the Option key and clicking to mask that together. Command T for free transform, and then flip horizontal. And then, just going to pull our highlight over until it lines up nicely with the shadow. And then, again, number two, Drop that down. That might be a little strong, so I'm going to hit 1 5 for 15. And that looks fine. Okay. Now let's do some text. Actually, let's add some gloss first. So another new layer. And we're going to clip that as well. Now, using the pen tool, I'm going to draw a quick triangle. Hit Command Enter to convert that to a selection. G for my gradient tool. And then just drag down and create a nice simple gradient. And then I'm going to set this to 6% opacity. So now I have a little bit of a gloss on our book. So I'm going to drop this down to. Alright. Now for the text. So I'm going to use a font called Trump Gothic East. And we're going to say the. App design. And book. And the, this happens to already be an uppercase, which is what I want. But if it wasn't, you can set it using that right there. So for app design, I'm going to set this at 115 points to make it nice and big. And the handbook will do at maybe 80 points. We'll see how that works out. All right. So now it's kind of a basic feel of what I'm going for. But let's increase the character spacing. Yeah, that's about right. Maybe down a little bit. We'll go to 190. No, nope. maybe 195. Just to make it line up nicely. So now we need to center these, so I'm going to select the two text layers I want, and then command click on my book cover shape, and then click the center button. It's there, and then I'll line up the word the, right about where I want it. So now let's double click here to bring up our layer styles. Set the angle to 90 degrees, so it's going to top down. The distance to 1, and the blur to 3, roughly. And then just kind of drop our opacity a little bit. And then what I did is hold down the Alt or Option key and click and drag, and that duplicated the layer style onto my other layer. And I want to fade these into the background a little bit, so I'm going to set the opacity down to 70. Let's see that right there on both of those. And finally, 
we need a byline. So I'm going to add by Nathan Barry. And we will kind of fade that out a little bit too. Then these all accidentally ended up being clipped to the shape of the book, which is not necessary at all. So I'm going to undo that. Zoom out, take a look, looks pretty good. Alright, I'm going to save this. Alright. Done the screencast a couple of fail times, so that's why there are a couple copies there. Alright, what's next? We need some text off to the side. So for this, I'm gonna write some text over here. And I'm going to use Helvetica New. Um, I like the light font weight. And we'll try 30 points. And so here we're going to say Beautiful iOS applications. And of course, we don't want the letter spaced, and we don't need up. So there we go. We designed beautiful iOS updates. Again, I want a nice little drop shadow on that. Let's add some more text. Oops, that didn't work. Let's try it again. Sign so up to be the first to hear when the book launches. We can refine that later, but let's give it a few. And let's try 24. Yeah, 24 seems about right. We will go even a little smaller, down to 18. That's actually smaller than I want. We're going to try 22. So this is, if you can't tell, it's really just an experimentation process. And I want this a little more subtle, so I'm going to drop the opacity down to 70%. Oh, and we're missing a period on the title. All right, now let's put in an email sign-up box. So I have my rounded rectangle tool. And I'll just draw in a simple box. Maybe that, we'll clear out that layer style because that's not at all what I wanted. Set it to maybe a medium gray. I'm going to do a stroke on the outside, just one pixel. And we'll make it black, but drop that opacity maybe to 70%. And then also, a drop shot on this one, we're going to do two pixels, and zero pixels. The two pixels, because it needs to stick out from behind our other. Uh, behind our stroke. So one pixel would be hidden behind stroke. So let's bring that up a little more. Then I'm going to drop the opacity of this whole thing. Um, maybe an 8. Just playing with these values a little bit. I'm going to do an inner shadow as well. And just a really subtle one. Just to try to give it a little bit more depth. Okay, that's decent. So now I'm going to duplicate this layer because I want my button to be the same height, and that's the easiest way to achieve that. I'm going to drag that over there and press P for my pen tool, and then hold down Command and click on these corners. And then just drag it over. Just a little bit of space there. I'm going to select my orange color to fill that in with. Pump the opacity up. We'll still, we still want a stroke on it. The inner shadow I'm going to totally change. So it just comes one pixel down from the top, zero pixels. I'm going to change the blend mode to normal and set that to white. So now it's a little white highlight on it. We need a gradient overlay, 10%. will work just fine. 
And that drop shadow is way too strong, so we're going to fade that out quite a lot. And let's fade out the other drop shadow too, to match. Beautiful. Let's save that. Now let's put some text in here. So we'll put some placeholder text of email, oops, email ad address. And we'll set this maybe at 22 pixels. And then set the opacity down low. And then for our button, I'm just going to put the text subscribe, make sure it's, the layers are stacked in the correct order. And then let's put a drop shadow on this. In this case, I'm going to go minus 90, because I want the text to look slightly recessed. And then drop the opacity. So that gives it a tiny bit of recessed look. And then I'm going to come down to 18 on on this, just to make it look smaller. Let's set of the text. Not bad. Let's zoom out. Okay, so unfortunately this text is really hard to read because our image shines through too strongly. So I'm going to create a new layer and clip it to that and fill it the whole thing with black. And then I'm going to use my eraser and as you can see I have this set the hardness down to zero and just a giant brush for my eraser and I'm just gonna kind of center that and click once and erase and click again and one more time so you can see what that did is that faded in the edges a little bit and that's a nice effect but we really need to fill in behind the text so I'm going to switch to my brush I'm going to paint with black. My opacity is set to 50%. And again, the hardness is really low, and I have a 600 pixel brush. And I'm just going to click once back there, and again over here. I really just want to fade in the image behind my text so that the text becomes much more readable. And that does the trick pretty well. Let's save that. All right, so we could launch with that. I'm going to add a few more details. Across the top of the image, I'm going to draw a new rectangle. Let's see. There we go. We'll clear the layers out. And then I just want to do, so it's a black rectangle. And just a thin little one pixel line drop that opacity. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so we need it a little bit brighter. Actually, I'm going to set this to normal. And that just gives a little bit of a highlight across the top of our image and a little bit more depth, which I like. That looks pretty good. Okay. So now I want to do something with this bottom section. So I'm going to draw across here in the background. Actually, I want to move this layer down beneath my book. I'm going to scroll down, but still above my image. I'll select just a light gray, and that's it. So I'm going to do a black stroke around the outside, just to make a nice transition for that image, even though it's almost a black. And then a inner shadow that's white, just to give it a little bit of a highlight. And you'll notice that I really like doing this one pixel highlights and shadows. Let's see if we can find a good pattern to put on this. I have a bunch of patterns here from subtlepatterns.com and I'm just going to run through until I find one that looks good. As you can see from it changing, I've got just a bunch of great shapes and patterns. That one's decent. Let's see if I can find a different one. Ooh, 
I like that one. Okay, now there's a pattern there. That's nicely styled. So it doesn't, I'm going to move it up a little bit. It doesn't really feel like our book is sitting on, on there. It's kind of hovering. So first I'm going to select the background and just give a really broad shadow. So no distance, maybe a size of 8, and drop that opacity actually a little bit to 10. So that gives it just a little bit of a shadow, and that's fine. But what we're really going to need is to create a new layer and then use our elliptical marquee tool. Oops, I have a fixed size on that that I don't want. To just draw what's going to be our new shadow. I'm going to fill that with black. And you can see it's just kind of barely in there. I'm going to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just find a value that kind of works well. Okay. There's a little bit of shadow, I'm going to duplicate it and hit Command F to run that blur again. And that's pretty decent. Maybe drop it down up the opacity just a little bit. Just play with the values until they look right. This is the landing page, so we're not going to spend a ton of time getting it perfect. But I think that looks pretty good. Let's see what it looks like. Maybe in a future version we'd add more about information down here, footer text, but this is good for now. Thanks for watching.